Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be going over the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1. And so, what the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1 says is we assume that f of x is continuous from a to b, the closed interval a to b, and we're going to let capital F of x be the antiderivative of small f of x on the closed interval a to b. And so when we do all this, when we let f of x be continuous on, the, on its closed interval, and we let capital F of x be the antiderivative of a little f of x on the closed interval, then we get the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to the antiderivative of b minus antiderivative evaluated at a. So, let me say that. The antiderivative evaluated at b minus the antiderivative evaluated at a. And what this gives you is the area under the curve on the closed interval. So pretty much if we have this curve, y is equal to f of x. And what this does is we can call this A, we'll call this B, so it gives us the, in, the, and it gives us the area under this curve, this way. Instead of using those long Riemann sums, using the right endpoints, or using the left endpoints, letting n equal infinity, for we can calculate it exactly, all we have to do is take the antiderivative and evaluate it from A to B. That's pretty much what the fundamental theorem of calculus says. Is if we let is if if of f of x is continuous on the closed interval a to b, and we let capital F of x be the antiderivative of small f of x on the closed interval a to b, then we can find the area or the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx, which means with respect to x, is equal to f of b minus f of a. So I got a couple example problems here. We can go over them. So, number one is 3 to 6 x dx. We're going to start off easy. So, it says find the integral from 3 to 6 of x dx. So first thing we know that little f of x is equal to x. So if we take the antiderivative of that, it's going to equal x squared over 2. So if we evaluate it from b a to b, it's going to be f of b, which is 6. This is b. This is a. So we're going to go 6 squared all over 2. So all of this minus... 3 squared over 2, because 3 is a. Remember, we don't have to include plus c because this is actually on its on a domain. Like, it's actually on a closed interval, I should say. It actually has an interval on it, so we don't have to say plus c. So what we get is 36 over 2 minus 9 over 2. So we know that this equals 37 over 2. 27 over 2, my bad. So what we can say is integral from 3 to 6 of x to dx is equal to 27 over 2. And that's the answer to the first example problem. If you don't understand how to find the antiderivative, you should probably go back and read how to find the antiderivative of something. Because it's so, something you should know to understand the fundamental theorem of calculus. And in order to do these problems, you're going to need to know how to do how to find antiderivatives. Because that's the main point. It connects derivatives and antiderivatives. And that's one of the cool things about the fundamental theorem of calculus is because we don't have to, you know, 
we don't we have some curve we don't have to add up all of these triangles or rectangles under it trapezoids or whatever you know simpson's rule we don't have to do that we can just take antiderivative and minus b minus a and we can find the area under the curve and that's one of the cool things about the formula theorem of calculus is it connects integration and differentiation and it's one thing that you should really get used to and do lots of problems on because it really doesn't go away it just ends up you end up doing it all the time because it's just so important so let's go over this one now the integral from negative 3 to 2 of u squared du so it says find the area of this function u squared on the interval negative 3 to 2 and integrate with respect to u this is what this du means so we know that little f of x is equal to u squared so capital F of x is going to equal to u cubed all over 3 because we add 1 it's going to be 2 plus 1, which is going to be u cubed over 3. So now we're going to take, this is b, this is a, so we're going to go 2 cubed all over 3 minus negative 3 cubed all over 3. We'll put parentheses around them. So 2 cubed is 8 over 3 minus 27 cubed over 3. And so we're just going to distribute that inside of there. It's going to be 8 over 3 cubed, or 8 over 3, my bad, not cubed. 8 over 3 plus, since it's the minus times the minus, which equals a plus, 27 over 3. This is going to equal 35 over 3. So now we have this equal sign right here, so we can say the integral from negative 3 to 2 of u squared du. So find the area of u squared on the interval negative 3 to 2 and integrate with respect to u. And the area of, on the, on the area on the interval negative 3 to 2 on the function u squared is equal to 35 over 3. That's what this says. It says the area of u squared on the interval negative 3 to 2 integrating with respect to u is equal to 35 over 3. So let's just erase this and go over a couple more example problems. So now we're going to go the integral from negative 2 to 0 of 3x minus 2e to the x with respect to x. So we know that little f of x is equal to 3x minus 2e to the x. So capital F of x is going to equal 3x squared over 2 minus 2e to the x. going to evaluate it from A to B. Remember, this is A, this is B. This is going to equal 3 times 0 cubed squared all over 2 minus 2 times e to the 0. All of this minus negative or 3 times negative 2 squared all over 2 minus 2 times e to the power of 2. So this is going to go to 0. This is going to equal negative 1, negative 2 because e to the power of 0 is 1 times 2 is just negative 2. So this is minus. Well, over 2 minus 2e to the 
hard to. Negative two minus six plus two e to two. Negative eight plus two e to the two. And let's just find out what two e to the two is. Pretty sure it will be greater than eight. It's going to be 14. 0.77. Which is going to equal 6.77. So the integral from negative 2 to 0. 3x minus 2e to the x. With respect to x is equal to 6.77. One important thing you got to remember is if you're getting negative area on these problems, and if you look at the graph and it's not under the x-axis, then you're probably doing something wrong, because usually it will be positive. So if you have a graph, and the function looks like this, y is equal to f of x. Say you're trying to find the area of this. And you're getting like a negative answer. Then you're clearly seeing that it's not going to be negative because it's above the x-axis. It's supposed to be positive. So if you're getting a negative answer for that, it's um you're gonna have the you're doing something wrong. Probably something with just your arithmetic probably, maybe not distributing a negative or something like that. So just remember that for future reference. If you're getting something negative and you can clearly see that it's not supposed to be, just go back and check your answers again. So now we'll do a couple more. We'll do the integral from 1 to 3 of t cubed minus t squared with respect to t is equal to... Well, let's just find out what it's equal to. You know, f of x is equal to 2 cubed minus t squared, so t cubed minus t squared, which is capital F of x, is going to equal to 3, not 3, equal to t to the fourth all over 4 minus t cubed all over 3. Remember, it doesn't have to have a plus c because it's on a dom it's on an interval. Because it's a definite integral, because you know it's gonna have definite area. So now we're just going to evaluate it from b to a using this equation. So it's going to be f of b minus f of a. This is going to be 3 to the fourth all over 4 minus 3 to the cubed all over 3. All of this minus 1 to the fourth all over 4. Let's just make that. 1 to the 4th all over 4 minus 1 cubed all over 3. It's going to be 27 over 4 minus, not 27. It's going to be 81 all over 4 minus 27 all over 3. All of this minus. 1 over 4th minus 1 over 3. 1 to the 4th minus 1 to the 3rd. Now this is an important part. This is where your algebra and arithmetic come in. So now we're going to have to get common denominators. The only common place on this is going to be 12. So it's going to be 81 times 3 all over 4 times 3 minus 27 times 4 all over 3 times 4. All of this minus common denominators again 3 times 4 over 3 minus 4 times 1 I'm going to say times 1 just to make sure you understand what I'm doing. 